Descent Management, Part 1 Our video starts with the aircraft already set for the approach to Jeddah, 50 miles away from the top of descent. This will be a demonstration showing how some inputs on the FMC may affect the calculation of the descent path. Furthermore, it will show how it is possible to manage the profile in case the aircraft is above the desired path due to shortcuts, or due to some other unplanned changes. We are now flying at flight level 340. The cost index is 23, and the economic default speed calculated for descent is 265 knots. The ETA with this speed is at 11.55 with 3.4 tons of fuel. If the descent speed is changed to a faster speed, 320 knots for instance, the top of descent will be moved to a farther position. This is because the FMC is now calculating a steeper descent. This is not fuel efficient because it would keep the aircraft longer in cruise altitude. Observe that now the FMC is estimating the arrival 2 minutes earlier, but with 100 kilos less of fuel. The economic speed is calculated according to the cost index. It takes into consideration not only the fuel, but also the other costs involved in the operation of the aircraft. For now keep in mind, the faster is the speed, the steeper is the descent path calculated by the FMC. Let's keep economy speed selected for descent and see how the forecasted winds affected the calculation of the top of descent. In this example, let's enter the forecasted winds at flight level 300. When a strong tailwind is entered, the top of descent comes closer to the aircraft as the FMC now is anticipating a faster ground speed and a lower descent angle. If we enter a strong headwind, the top of descent moves farther away as the FMC now is considering a lower ground speed, and for this reason the descent angle will be steeper. Now we will set the actual forecast wind and let's observe the dynamic during the descent when we change the speed of the aircraft. During the descent, the ATC gave us clearance to fly direct to Passer after passing flight level 310. It will leave us above the new profile calculated by the FMC. This is because we will fly a shorter distance to reach our destination. Observe that the FMA changed to VNAV speed and the aircraft is not following the path anymore. In this situation, you may extend the speed brakes to increase the rate of descent, and re-intercept the profile. Although, if there is no speed restriction, there is a more efficient way to do it. Increasing the speed. This way, the rate of descent will increase, allowing us to correct our path. Besides, selecting the proper speed will make us land sooner with no extra cost of fuel. Let's set 320 knots on the descent page and see what is going to happen. 
as we already discussed, it will generate a steeper flight path and eventually will put us back on the profile. If the new speed you set leaves you too low, you can try a lower and more convenient speed. As we are below the new flight path, the FMA has changed to FMC speed and VNAP path. With 300 knots set, we are just below the new path and very soon it will be captured and the auto throttle will command idle thrust. Now the ATC is requesting a speed of 280 knots. After setting the new speed on the FMC, the FMA will display VNAV speed again, and we will have the indication that we are high on the new profile. In this case, we cannot increase the speed, so the only choice we have to re-intercept the path is extending the speed brakes to increase the rate of descent. Once the path is re-intercepted, the FMA will change to VNAV path and the speed brakes can be retracted. Now the ATC is requesting even a further reduction to 250 knots. The new path calculated is not very far from the actual path, and that is why VNAV path is still displayed on the FMA. The aircraft will maintain the new path but as the speed is well above a target speed, the drag required message is displayed on the scratch pad. In this case, to reduce the speed, the speed brakes have to be extended again. When reaching 250 knots, the speed brakes can be retracted. There are many different ways to use the automation of the aircraft. Have a good understanding of how each command works and make sensible choices to reduce your workload.